Phoenix, the first thing Carmen Jones noticed was the FBI sniper on the roof of the Fort McDowell Casino following her as she walked around the building with her 10-month-old son in her arms. Nearby, more FBI agents in heavy flak jackets, some toting assault rifles, stood guard, sweltering in the 90-degree heat. Jones, a tribal member of the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation, which owned and operated the casino, had rushed to the casino from her home after getting a call from Yavapai tribal elder Eladoka. The older woman had driven a friend to work around 6 a.m. on May 12, 1992, when she saw the tribe's slot machines being loaded into moving vans. Soon, Jones and her child were joined by other women from the tribe and her uncle, Gilbert Jones, a member of the Fort McDowell Tribal Council. They parked their cars in front of the moving vans and kept watch while others went to call for more help. More Yavapai people rushed to the scene, surrounding the parking lot and the perimeter of the casino, blocking the trucks from coming or going in what was rapidly becoming a stand for tribal rights. Within two hours, the Fort McDowell Tribal Sand and Gravel Company sent its huge earth movers across the Verge River to join the blockade. People yelled at the agents to put the machines back and leave them alone to run their business. Over the next few hours, even more native people and their allies joined the blockade. They stood guard over vans adorned with the Mayflower Moving Company logo. They blocked the government's vehicles, preventing the moving vans and the FBI from leaving with more than 300 gaming machines. At noon, Arizona Governor Fife Symington learned of the showdown and flew the 30 miles to the small reservation to meet with Fort McDowell President Clinton Pata to defuse the situation. After negotiating a cooling-off period, the tribe continued to protest with powwows and prayer rallies, as neighbors supplied food and water to those involved. Eventually, the tribe won a compact with the state to engage in gaming. For many native people, the raid and subsequent 10-day standoff represented a call to defend their land and government from being overrun by the state. The showdown between the tiny Arizona tribe and the U.S. government was a turning point in the history of Indian country and tribal sovereignty, paving the way for the growth of Indian gaming as an economic driver and pulling many tribes out of poverty. The standoff is such an incredible event, eh? Even to this day, I go back and I watch the videos. The Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation, known in 1992 as the Fort McDowell Mojave Apache Tribe, is about 30 miles east of Phoenix.